Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, we'll talk about event-driven architecture, specifically events versus messages. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Back at lesson 165, I talked about event-driven architecture, uh, some of the ways it works and why you would use it and choose not to use it. What I'd like to do in this lesson is to kind of take one step deeper and take a look at the difference between events and messages and when you would use each within event-driven architecture. The question about whether an event is different than a message, and the answer is, in fact, yes, it is. Uh, we tend to use these terms interchangeably, uh, but there are some key differences between these. Um, the biggest difference is this. <clears throat> an event is something that you're advertising that has already happened. In other words, I just placed an order. Um, so it's, it's a state change. It's something I did that I want to let you know about. Whereas a message is more of a command or a query. In other words, I need you to do something for me or I need some information from you. Uh, good examples are apply a payment for this order or give me the payment type. So this is the first key difference between an event and a corresponding message. The other difference has to do with the channel itself. Typically, not always, but typically, events use publish and subscribe messaging using topics, uh, streams, uh, notification services, uh, and these sort of things. Whereas a queue or a message utilizes more point-to-point -point messaging using queues, uh, messaging services like SQS, for example. And so this is another key difference. Now, I say typically here because we can certainly publish an event to a queue, knowing that only one receiver is going to act or react to that event. But typically, uh, this is the alignment between events and messages. Uh, the other difference has to do with ownership of both the channel and also the contract. You see, with events, that message channel is essentially owned by the sender, the one publishing the event. Um, so in other words, in this particular case, order placement would own that event channel, meaning it owns its name, uh, it controls where that's located. Or as with messaging, it's exactly the opposite. Uh, the receiver is the one who owns that channel. And if you wanna talk to me, you have to conform to that queue name. I, I own that whole name. I can control its location. And that ownership extends also to the payload itself and the corresponding contract. Because with events, that contract is owned and maintained by the sender. So I am broad broadcasting something I did. This is the contract. And if you're interested in responding to that event, then you have to conform to that contract. Whereas with messages, it's exactly the opposite. Uh, the receiver of that message is the one who controls and maintains uh, that contract. So if order placement wants to communicate with, pl with payment, for example, in this, in this example, uh, order placement would have to conform to whatever contract payment says. So these are four key differences between events and messages, and you can see they, they are um, very much different. So this question came up, I believe it was actually in Lesson 165 uh, in the comments. Um, when should I use events versus messages in event-driven architecture? And I really enjoyed this question because it allowed me to talk about the differences between events and messages, but also very interesting question. So here's a typical event-driven architecture. And notice that we're placing or publishing events, things that happened. Notice another difference here. An event is always stated in past tense. 
So uh, order is placed. Is anybody interested in that? And turns out that payment, notification, and inventory are all interested in that event. And, and all these things happen at the same time. Um, payment says, well, I apply to payment. And I'm just letting everybody know. And fulfillment says, well, I need that information because I can't fulfill an order <laughs> until it's paid. And an order fulfillment fulfills that. Well, notification and shipping are interested in that. Once it's shipped, notification is interested in that as well. And so this is a very typical um, model of event-driven architecture, where notice we're using all events. Let's think about some use cases where we might want to use messages here. For example, maybe order placement says, I know we're all asynchronous, and I know that this is all fire and forget messaging or, or events, but I need to know that that payment was applied. Maybe I've got a state change or uh, some processing I need to do. Well, this is all highly decoupled. So this might be a case where I might maybe use a message for async notification so that payment directly talks to order placement through a queue with a message saying, yes, um, I'm confirming that I applied that payment. That's one possibility for using messages within event-driven architecture, but think about it. Is there another way order placement can know that the payment was applied? And in fact, it does. It does not need to use this async notification, but rather it could just simply subscribe to the payment applied event. So in this case, it's not necessary to have that async notification because I can certainly just subscribe to an event to tell it, let me know that it happened. It's like, hmm. So I started thinking, what are some other use cases that we might want to use messaging? And there is, in fact, one where we do in event-driven architecture, and that's to control the order, the processing order. You see here, when orders placed, all three of these happen at the same time. But maybe what we want to do is to control the order. In other words, once I place an order, payment is the first thing that needs to happen. Then inventory. Then we notify the customer. Now, certainly, I can try to do this by subscribing to particular events, but that might be a little complicated. So this is one area where instead of that event being published, order placement now controls the processing of that. So order placement may, in fact, send a message to payment saying, apply the payment. Notice, now this is a different color coding, but regardless of the color, notice that this is a command. Apply the payment. It's still asynchronous. It's still fire and forget. Well, eventually, when the payment's applied, payment sends an async notification back to order placement on a separate channel saying, okay, acknowledged. Yep, payment is applied. Then order placement can say, okay, the second thing that needs to happen is to adjust inventory. Notice it sends a message point to point, specifically to inventory, saying now adjust the inventory. Inventory says, okay, separate channel, asynchronous, still fire and forget, to let order placement know, yeah, that part's done. And then it orchestrates the third process, which is to notify the customer. So this might be a use case to control the processing order in fairly complex event-driven architectures where we don't re want to rely on trying to rearrange subscriptions in the thought that multiple things can possibly happen, but really control that processing and direct these. So anyways, this was one um, possibility I thought of. I thought it was a great question, but typically, typically, most of the time we use events with publish and subscribe. And so anyways, just a kind of a short lesson to really dive a little deeper into event-driven architecture. So um, this has been Lesson 175, Events versus Messages. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, stay tuned in 
two more weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.